Man, this room I'm looking at is like memories. I remember Brandon and I almost got into a fist fight in this room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't even try it. Don't even try it. There's been hey, a man. few fights in this room. <laughs> <laughs> and in this corner away. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 87 kilos. <laughs> Motherfuckers in the sunny day of Berlin, Germany. <laughs> JT, you need to get a little bit closer to Brandon. Just a little bit. If I mean, well, all I got is eggshell right now. Oh, there's, oh, some, there's some glasses. Put the angle of the screen down, Jay. That's all. Just yeah, just I'm there you go. Then, there you go. Perfect. Okay, so, okay, so that's my phone getting the tour. Of here it. we go. Everybody, so, man, what up, dude? Man, look. You jelly donut ass motherfucker. <laughs> 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 You've been ein Berliner. Hey. Ne, Yo, ne. 10 years, 11 ne, years. Ne, ne. How long have you been there? Ich bin ein Kreuzberger. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're not, so what are they eating Kreuzberg? They don't eat jelly donuts. There. No, no, eat? ain't no jelly donuts, but they do have, what, what was that jelly donut that, um, a Berliner. Yeah, exactly. It's a Berliner. Right. They yeah. have them in here and there, but the Kreuzbergers don't play that shit. This is like this is like Brooklyn circa 1993, 94. Oh, that's when I had like a studio. Yeah, my bro had The rest of Berlin, man, it's been so gentrified <laughs> in the last five years. The money's come from everywhere. I mean, it's no longer that Berlin that I knew when I got here. But I want to talk about meat. Um, All right, I'm talking about. I mean, and I mean, I could do a screen share, but okay. Uh, in the email I sent you guys as a prep, I right. mean, this is a couple of things, and I'm sure. And I got to tell you about this um, this website if you haven't checked it out yet. Uh, it's called Musicians Corner, and it's musicians on music. They don't. They even have like this uh, um, award now for uh, the best music journalist at first it was going to be the worst but we talked about it. it's like well that might be a little negative so we'll do the best which means you only got like three to choose from that's what i'm saying there's no best that's like, you know. <laughs> anyway but um if anybody can discuss this i think it's you cats because um now that we're in the 21st century uh I had uh, I just recently did a gig with this young cat Kelvin Scholar from Detroit, great key keyboardist, and uh, part of the interaction with the audience was about new and old machines, and uh, you know we discussed well we had a little interaction about the notion of the saxophone created by Adolf Sax in eighteen something or other, and then there was the trumpet and da 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 and the sort of uh, roots and ancient family of machines that they call musical instruments. Uh, the voice being the oldest, then the drum, and as technology grew, so on and so forth. But now we're in the 21st century. And so the question is like, in an, uh, I, I witnessed this old debate, maybe like four or five years old, between Stanley Crouch and James and Toomey oh, about, yeah. about uh, Miles. You saw that with Melvin? Oh, I love that one. Yeah. Well, he's, like, he's, that was like the smack, oh, and two is gonna smack you down anyway. And then Krauss was, was just not even prepared. Not for that. And so the issue came up again about the exhaustion of technology, and uh, where we are now, where you know, sixteen-year-old kids, they get uh, you know a laptop and either Pro Tools they've afforded or or Logic, which you know is the easiest, and all of a sudden they're musicians. Not because they have ideas, but because technology has provided them with this platform to make sounds. So the issue was, is electronic music an arrangement of sounds, or is it music? And, of course, that pivoted around uh, the old machine versus the new machine. So, I mean, in, uh, the discussion in some ways has to do with the exhaustion of the 19th century. And at this point, 
uh, 19th century technology exhausted in the 20th century. I mean, who's done anything new on the saxophone since since Ornette? Right. Who? I mean, I can't think of anybody unless they plugged it up to something and, you know, created some sounds. Remember that thing they used to play uh, called, a, what was that thing, that first wind electronic instrument that looked like just a straight pipe? Like e e e <laughs> one of them joints, you know. It was like, oh, we got to get one of those. Yeah, because it's set up just like saxophone or flute. Yeah, Ewe. Uh. Yeah, so... Um, can we talk about that a little bit? I mean, how do you guys feel about the extension of the old machines, let's say? Mm. Well, you know, it's interesting because I was on a train yesterday, and I walked, you know, me being me, I, I got to walk through the train. And when I got on the train, a drummer, it was a kid with a cymbal bag, Luke, you know. I call him a kid, he was probably 19, 20. I walked through to the next car, there was another kid with a cymbal bag. I walked through to the next car. There was another kid with a cymbal bag. And I was, I was like, oh. At that point, I was kind of like, wow, you know, I guess. Uh, they were coming to my house. Drums are making, you know, <laughs> drums are making a comeback now. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, I, think, I think there's two issues. I think the reason that you don't have any innovation is because people are not being people there's no it's a funny point in people's in human history and a funny point in definitely in American history and I think people just are in a conservative moment right now I think they don't really have people are scared to, either scared to say something new or they don't have anything new to say and the one thing I always say is that they don't have music, a place to say it well it's not just that music once the sampler was invented music stopped Nobody made anything new after that. So now you have a situation where everybody goes back to that era to pick up from. But it's been, what is it, 35 years since, no, 40 years now since then. So you got a whole generation that didn't come up with their own shit, you know, so musically. I mean, obviously, you know, through the voice, a lot is happening. Uh, and so to me, I, I don't think it's a question of the... the the technology pushing the thing down. I think that is the question of how people want to express themselves. I mean, for me, I, I actually think the most interesting artist in New York right now is not an artist or a musician. It's the dance of Storyboard Pete. You know, I think that that's what's the, the thing that's really happening right now. I think people, the, that's where the, the innovation is happening on the straight physicality. And that, you know, that might be a direction to take a conversation in as well. Mm -hmm. Brandon, I mean, you, <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm sure you didn't start off with an electric guitar. I mean, your fundamental uh, uh, introduction to your instrument was probably an acoustic guitar. Right. That's true. And I it was, remember it us... It was a rubber band and a paper airplane. <laughs> I remember us once talking about Hendrix, <laughs> not to use this icon immediately for guitar players, but... Uh, and we discussed the notion of the control of frequency, elect the, the frequency rather than the melodic thing or even rhythmic thing, but the notion of now you're controlling electricity. Right. So well, that make that leap consciously and gear yourself up for that application. What was that like? I mean... Well, you know, Sadiq, I'm always... And, and you may know this, you may not know this, but I'm... Often, there's a line in one of your poems that we used to do in the overflow, of which Melvin was a member, that even Bacon said or held something about, and then there's a line that follows about the technologies of being. Yeah. So whenever we talk about technology, whenever I hear that conversation, what strikes me is that there's very little, if any, discussion certainly not in the mainstream, but anywhere at all, about the technology of being, which to my way of looking at things is a completely other discussion and a higher order about this entire issue. Um, Exotechnology or you know, mechanical, mechanistic technology, cyber technology, anything that involves us going outside of ourselves is really interesting and it's fascinating and, and you get all of these expressions 
of how to manipulate that. So the example you gave where someone you know, buys a piece of equipment and suddenly now they are a musician or isn't music because they're doing this. You know, my thought about that is that that's a, a, a relationship with a form of physical technological expression. But the technology of being is the thing that we leave in a room after we play or while we're playing. So if you talk about Hendrix or you talk about Harriet Tubman, um, that thing that happens as a result of the presence in the room and how you manipulate something and what the effect is, what that impact is on the beings in that space and the space itself, that's the technology that I'm always fascinated by and interested in. And it's why the resonance of people that we consider great, like Hendrix or Coltrane or Ordinette or any number of people in any number of fields, that to me is why they have significance beyond their time, you know, beyond the framework of the time that they were doing that thing. Uh, and that will always carry through. What I see in the current context is people reference back to that period of time. But they're involved with the artifacts and not the essence of what was going on. Mm. Okay? What, what we're involved in, I consider you among a group of people who are also involved in that, and certainly Melvin and JT, and we've had discussions about this, perhaps not in this specific language, but that's always what we're talking about. <coughs> we're involved in that thing, that, that essence, that stream, that thing that goes on beyond all of that. Now, <laughs> you can hit people, so to speak, upside the head with that, and they know that something happened. They don't necessarily know why, but they, what I hear is younger people or certain kinds of people try to, try to pin it down or reference it to something. Oh, yeah, you coming from that thing, yeah, that yeah, yeah. school thing, or, or, or you like that da 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 That da, school da, like, or this school. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, okay, as, as it is for you, as it needs to be for you. Yeah, so, yeah. so, But that's not what's going on. That's not really what's happening. So the technologies of being, to me, is the thing that that's going on. So if you're coming from that place and you're operating in the field of what people call electronic music, you know, if you're hitting on some shit, we're gonna get it. And it, it you know, it's like, I mean, Sun Ra was playing electronic music. He was an electronic musician, you know? There were lots of people dealing with that. Some people, uh, I've read recently, uh, this guy was talking about the music of the spheres, mm -hmm. meaning that the whole thing is musical frequency. The entire existence has to do with uh, receiving and responding to the sound of the, how the universe sounds. And it's all about sound. Yeah, it's all I think about sound. this the not, the, the you know, like when we play when the, when three of us play together, we're not. I'm not thinking. Of, actually, when we play, I'm not even thinking about playing drums. <laughs> I'm just there contributing to the sound with the tools that are in front of me. I never actually thought about, oh, I gotta play this beat or I gotta play that beat. I, I, what I'm playing, what I'm doing is, I'm contributing to what the sound is telling me to contribute. You know? Yeah. And I'm using the tools that are in front of me. The lived moment. This is that. It's, it's, it is, well, what, the technology yeah. of being is the lived moment. It's not a reference. It's what happens right now. And, and you can't get there, like, in, in a day or two days. You know, to be able to understand what that kind of of uh, terminology and 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 and, and technology, what, what the technology is about. Like, for instance, me and Melvin play together. We we, we don't even talk about what we're going to play but this is it's, it's about melding the sound into a into another sound yeah into tubman into whatever that is yeah <laughs> you know what we call so then, <laughs> you know actually and then it starts to go beyond the, the vocabulary speaking of speaking about what it is you know yeah, which because when you say vocabulary which goes back it is to a language the beginning of sound and playing and rituals and everything else there were no words for that. It was that thing that that put people on a high, on a more spiritual higher level. So to explain what we do or to explain what it really is, there is really no terminology for it. I mean, I have students. I try to tell them, 
you know, like I, they ask me these questions about like, okay, what are you doing? Like, what is, because I can write something down on the blackboard or, or play some, you know, play some, technically, technically, not spiritually, play something for them to, to emulate. But on the spiritual level, I can't teach them what that thing taught me. They have to, they need to, they have to do their own work to oh. get the, what the I actual so. hieroglyphic of that is, is telling you, you know? And when, when, you know, like for instance, when you interact with younger musicians and you, you start playing and then, then you shift into that other gear and then they look at you like, okay, what, 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 okay, what is that? You know, like what is, okay, can you? No, you would have to tell them, well, that was like 1983. I was getting off the train and oh. then da, 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 da. <laughs> and, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's part of it too. Of course. It's all of it. I mean, you're only playing yourself, like you said. But I want to move on because we're like 20 minutes in and, you know, this could end up being like an hour and a half. Yeah, and then, ahead. you know, you know, with this uh, 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 ADD. <laughs> well, so, so just, how, yeah, just how, to say that, that the question about technology yeah. and, you know, the, like 19th century technologies, uh, are they exhausted, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But see, to me, that, that question, I always underscore that question is, well, technology of being, have, has, has that technology been exhausted? And in terms of modern contemporary society, Absolutely not. It's not. It's not even been uh, promoted or or <coughs> developed uh, to the extent that so that's available. Well, that's and why I, they're still taking yoga lessons and shit. You know. Well, yeah, exactly. But that's even that. You know, that's popped up into. I mean, yeah. We. we <laughs> you know, it's like, can I get a gig? Oh, yeah. You can get certified. Be a yogini. You can teach yoga. We can make some money. You can make forty dollars a pop every day. You know, blah blah blah. blah. It's it's it's. <laughs> It viewed with that sensibility too, <laughs> but there is a thing that always comes in. It's like they got a brother in the White House, and people can tell you all kinds of reasons why that's this or that. But the fact is that it's it's like that thing about what's his name Hugo, whatever it was. You know, like there's I forget his, I'm space on his last name, but there's no one thing more powerful than all the armies of the world, and that is an idea whose time has come. Like regardless of what you think about that guy in the White House. The fact is that a whole lot of people have seen something that they can't stop. You can't change. You can't stop that idea anymore. That's been imbued into people, and that's out there. They know that a brother has been in the White House. You can't undo that. You know what I'm saying? I would. I would divert from this conversation right now due to the political nature of. The <laughs> 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 I, 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 I want to ask whoever's listening. Yeah. I want to actually answer the question you asked. I mean, the short answer is no. 19th century is technology is not exhausted. 19th for, or 20th? Or 19th. or or and the reason is because the interface is at a level that no digital technology has gotten to yet. The amount of control you have over a guitar or a saxophone or even an acoustic piano, no digital instrument can, can match that. And it, it may happen in our lifetimes, it may not. But because of that very reason is a, the main reason people still play instruments. You know, at the point where the, where the interface is at the same level, then we can maybe have this conversation. Agreed. Well, perhaps the... the, the you uh, still have to play the drum. You still well, got to hit the motherfucker. Yeah. The, the um, uh, limitation, let's say, of uh, a drum kit. You're only going to get X amount of sounds. No, but that's, the, that's not a limitation. You can, get more, you can get more overtones out of this drum than you can get out of any sample drum. Well, but that's what you I can mean. get more sounds. You can get more, you can get more degrees of... Uh, nuance out of it than you can out of any digital drum. Right, so that, but that's, yeah. no, that's, I agree with you 100%, but that means spending the time, that, 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 calls, that's for, that calls for a kind of process and relationship that it calls for craftsmanship. Is, about, is about the technology of being to me. It's like about, you have to find value in spending that kind of time. I know some people, if you say to them, I mean, if we're in India, it's a totally different conversation, but here if you say to somebody, yeah, just play those five notes in as many different ways as you can. On the same like, drum. Or whatever. And they're like, 
they're like, well, why should I have to spend the time to do that? I can sequence that in and it's done. And then I'll just put in a random, you know, variation thing. You know, it, and then that's done. But that eliminates what process does, the meta values that, that take place when you have to walk to the store and come back with the thing instead yeah. of sitting in a room and downloading it online. Or putting it in a microwave and letting well, it heat up for two minutes. I, I, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what that, <laughs> Okay, these are, these are very good answers. But now I got on my journalist hat as hey, a musician, no. and I got to press forward because we could, you know. Oh, they have say. questions. Wait a minute, let's order the Chinese food. And, uh, yeah, right, exactly. Fine. It's okay. Monday Night Football. I'm kicking these guys out soon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, number two, Harriet Tubman. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and my theme uh, for when I bring up Harriet Tubman is, of course, my favorite piece by Harriet Tubman, which is called There Goes the Neighborhood. Oh, shit. Yeah. I mean, for me, that's like the quintessential idea when I when somebody says, have you ever heard of Harriet Tubman? And I'm looking at him like, mm-hmm. Uh, I would hear in my mind, There Goes the Neighborhood. But this is coupled with... Uh, Working musician, uh, working music in New York City. Mm-hmm. So you get on the one hand the dynamics of a fantastic, really hardcore electric guitar, electric bass, drum trio uh, against the working fabric of New York. I mean, how does that? How does? How do we tend to this now? Well, I don't work in New York. That's one answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same I'm, thing in Berlin. It catch me like, when are you yeah. going to play in Berlin again? And I'm, I look at the sidewalk. It's like, I mean, when they pay me. You know, when York, they pay me. New York. You know, I know unless what I'm worth. Unless you know, York, and, I work and, New York. And, yeah, but I'm That's, saying, you know, you have to pay me what I'm worth, which means, of course, I don't work that much. It, well, you know, like, it's... I didn't say I didn't work much. I said I don't work in New, New York. York. But because, I'm saying about <laughs> specifically New York City, because since that's... You know. The financial capital of the universe and shit like that. They ain't spending no money on music. Not good music. Well, that's what I'm about to say. It goes back to the 99%, 1% thing. I mean, it's like, we, you know, we'll do the 1% gigs. I'm, I'm personally not doing any 99% gigs because, one, I'm, that's not what I feel I'm worth. Two. Thank you. I've been down that road. You know, I play every, you know. I can walk you around Harlem and show you where the clubs used to be, you know, <laughs> you know four cents, four cents for $50. You can make so more like, money. so now what is it? It's three sets for, you know, $150, you know, and the explanation rate has gone triple. I'm not going to do that, right. you know? So, but as, as far as, that's wrong. but, you know, on the other hand, we played up, we played up in Harlem two weeks ago and, you know, it went very well. It was a nice crowd. It's it's something that has to be solved. I mean, the whole issue of New York is New York past its sell date as far as an innovative place. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. Uh, I'm still here, so yes, there's still innovative people here. JT's still here. Brandon's still here. But I think this is definitely not a town, and I'll say this without feeling contradicting. This, if I was starting off in music right now, this would not be on my list of places to come. It just wouldn't be. Okay. So, it's this is for people. To, New York is for people who have kind of established themselves. And you, but the thing that's great about New York, New York is the place where you can sit and have a high level conversation with damn near anybody. Like the conversation you're having with Brandon, you can I can have that with the bus driver. <laughs> no, I mean literally. Okay. You know, so that's the thing about New York, which keeps a lot of people here. Brandon, but, your, your standing has been diminished substantially. No, I'm, d- I'm, d- <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I don't mind being a servant. <laughs> no, well, you know, Civil you service. can't sleep on bus drivers in New York City. You'd be surprised who drives a bus in this town. Man. And that's because they have to, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know. Physicists kind of like, and chemists and shit are driving buses. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, it's like it's. The, the bus drop, the, the transit is the post office of this era, you yeah. know what I mean? It's a lot of really talented guys who are just like, you know, wait, wait for you to swipe your Metro card or whatever. Right. I mean, I've had many people, That's I true. get on the bus, they ask me what kind of base I got, you know, yes, I still take the bus because I'm, you know, whatever. Yeah. 
Because it's, it's faster in the rocket. Public transportation is the social model. Be like, I mean, come on. They'll be like, oh, okay, what kind of base is that? You know, so obviously they know I'm playing the base. I tell them, they're like, oh, you know, I had an ex, you know, Fodera or some other expensive instrument. So the guys are all on. Anyway, so, but the basic, to answer your basic question, I mean, New York was the crucible for what this band is in terms of the combination of elements that makes New York, New York. And the combination of, it's still the most multicultural place in the world, you know. It's still, even though now you gotta be, you know, 47, gotta have 47 times we more Luke to hang here. It's still the place where you have these kind of culture clash collisions. And that aspect of the culture in New York very much resonates still with the aspect of what Tubman does because we're basically clashing a bunch of cultures that these guys wouldn't uh, sit in the same room if they didn't have to. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, we went through a whole thing, you know, a couple of years ago about, you know, we didn't go through, but, you know, I heard back channel about us getting on the Vision Festival. That was pretty controversial at the time. To me, it's a no brainer. But I would agree with that. Yeah. But to the people who run the festival, it was very much a brainer and their brain said no. So this is why because you plug something up. Well, it couldn't have been the music itself because I mean, there. What I was told, and you know, I'm going to go ahead and I, she didn't say it was confidential, so I'm going to spread it. Uh, she was worried that about her audience being able to accept what we're doing, which is extremely ironic in the context of free, unquote, quote jazz so or how new york for that matter yeah. <laughs> how free is it really you know what i mean so these so that that's that issue but i mean for me that's the whole point the, the whole point of what i try to do and what whole point of what this band is doing you, you know we're breaking boundaries it's like the whole thing you know you know you're going to be free one way or another but you know the business people won't want to be free that's a whole nother issue but in terms of the resonance between the band and New York, I feel it's still there. I feel like we're in a serious political situation right now that if anything is making certain kinds of music that weren't relevant for a while very relevant. I mean, I did a thing a few months ago, there was an Eric Dolphy symposium out in Montclair and I played on it. And I was amazed at how fresh all of that music felt. Mm. I mean, the, 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 the New, New York, I don't know about where you're at, but New York, East Coast of America, is definitely going through some kind of transition that may or may not be good. And people are, I feel like it's, got, it's gotten to the point now where people are starting to reflect. Okay, and Brandon, Brandon yeah. what do you think about the, this, these contentions with uh, not so much what you have available, but uh, there's a sort of dissonance uh, with cura curatorial powers and them being able to define what is relevant and what is not relevant based on their own history or personal taste or education, let's say. Yeah, well, so what do I think about that? Well, I mean, isn't that like a part of the dilemma in New York? Remember, go. let's go back a couple yeah. of decades to, say, Knitting Factory or mm -hmm. thread waxing space, or these kind of spaces where there was a different sort of curatorial uh, application than, like this woman says, I'm worried about if my audience, your audience, you ain't playing shit, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> your audience, so. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's a, it's very interesting. I mean, the one space that comes to mind immediately when you address that, that seemed to, uh, soften that context is, was the stone where they had you know you were invited different musicians monthly to curate the performers for during that month right. um, which is you know even then that was a selective process I mean you know people are gonna reach out to people or select people that they think will serve the idea or the intention of whatever they're doing whatever the endeavor is but that was an interesting way of expanding the base of what gets heard and, and what has a platform, which I think was pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's shrunken in a way because now everybody gets a week. You know, you, you, you select somebody, they have a whole week of nights at the stone. So okay. greater depth, perhaps more in depth, but then fewer, fewer people involved. 
but less work for the curators, that's for sure. Um, you know, I was talking about that because of the way work is discussed. I was looking at this thing online about Kara Walker's piece, that installment she did of the giant sugar baby, like the Sphinx Jemima thing, which I'm sorry I missed, but I was on the road at the time, so that's why I missed it. But um, And the, the curators at Creative Time were discussing this, talking about it, and I'm thinking, first of all, everybody was white that spoke in this particular video, and I thought, you know, what... Uh, who gets to talk about this stuff and who are they talking to? Exactly. Because that is the issue. Who you're talking to about this thing that you're presenting. So you've got... Well, who is Carol Walker talking to? Carol Walker's talking to... Well, she's talking to me. I mean, in the end, that's what it is and they get to interpret who she's talking to. Well, they... she, But the people that are talk, that are interpreting her... Right. They're not talking to the people that she's okay. from or about yeah. or that's talking to. They're talking to people who um, are in a position to further this particular cause. Well, there's two types. By their degree of there's access. Two, there's two languages. By their degree of access and the resources they may be able to um, acquire. Or, or resources, okay. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> resources. And, I mean, and, and that's the issue. So, you know, it, again, it leads us down that old road. Um, that's, you know, that's my, my thought about that. It's, uh, there needs to be an expanded language. There needs to be a broader base of uh, people who can relate to something uh, that's not in code, that's not code, codified, <laughs> you know? Well, it's all code. Anyway, yeah. I want to press, press on uh, about Harriet Tubman's uh, releases. Uh, mm -hmm. We have I Am a Man. We have, what was the next one? Um, uh, uh, prototype. Sorry. And then now it's Ascension. Ascension. Was there and anyone it's... between Prototype and Ascension? No. Nothing that came out, no. Okay, but There's... the story of the nine or ten years it took to get the record out. Well, I mean... <laughs> let me jump on that because <laughs> I want to I want to go back a, a minute. Okay. Because to go back to the curatorial thing because uh, I've never done any, I've never done a series at the Stone, but I did a bunch at the old knitting factory, right. and I did a bunch of tonic. And if I remember correctly, the Ascension record actually came, it's actually from one of my curatorial runs. Okay. Knitting factory. At the knitting factory. Damn, that's ages ago. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll leave the Carol Walker part of it alone. Okay. But really, the long story short, the music business fell apart. Uh -huh. And, you know, because, you know, 9-11 and everything after that, the music, there are a lot of people who haven't re haven't made literal records in years. You know, it's, it's just, it, we're not, we're, you know, we're, we're a part of a fairly large group. And it's, the other thing is, it's a question of very conservative taste in music in the New York jazz scene. I mean, you know, we're doing, we're, we just did a thing about, of Thread Gill's music. You know? Who was a revolutionary in, in <laughs> himself. It, I mean, now people are ready to hear it. Well, they were ready to hear it then. And they've yeah. lost 50% of what they had capacity-wise for that application to, at this point. So, I mean, it becomes, in some yeah. sense, and I don't, I don't like to uh, uh, add my philosophical uh, thing to your conversation, but, you know, it becomes uh, uh, another reflection of the dumbing down. Yeah. It's what people country. are being fed. It's what they're yeah. being it's fed. Same, we're saying the same thing, but it's like, you know... What whatever they're being fed ain't producing no neurons. That's what she said. There's no rich vitamins in there. You know, it's like you, he, you take your kids to, to to McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What are you gonna get? Yeah. But I want to refer to those people who are uh, uh, who visit the site and are interested because I mean, when I do an interview, it's an extensive interview. I don't do these little short soundbite bullshits. I want to know some stuff. And so I would just want to say that there are the three albums out by Harriet Tubman. The first being uh, I Am a Man. Yes? Mm hmm Yes. S second is Prototype. And mm -hmm. the latest is Ascension, uh, right. which sounds, which I love. It sounds nothing like the John Coltrane Ascension. <laughs> that, to me, is really appreciating the author. Yeah, you know, yeah thank when, you. Yeah. When you don't try to, like, let me see. Um, some of this brown. 
<laughs> Let me cut my hair. You hold my saxophone a certain way. I mean, you know. So has I mean I I am not one who uh, uh, am of the mind that uh, music is dead uh, by a long shot, but there is a certain uh, for me a certain uh, if not an attempt uh, certain measures of dulling what people like us do creative music to dull its possibility. You mentioned. Uh, uh, the conserve conservation aspect or being conservative and then of course I don't want to bring up certain names that are associated with the Lincoln Center jazz uh, blah 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 <laughs> I don't want to do that because that's another two hours you know on and we're already like 40 we love minutes them all. Not a fucking, we love them all I know <laughs> exactly whether or not they walked out on uh, on stage on Miles's concert Miles to say look Fuck back over there, boy. You know. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. So let me insert on that okay. issue, just because you mentioned okay. Lincoln Center, but not about Lincoln Center, but about the fact that Jason Moran was the person who um, activated the whole retro, this retrospective of Henry's work. Right. And, you know, Jason is a person who finds himself in a position where he has audience, he has people's ears, he has access, they want to hear from him, and his interests come into this world where we are. Because otherwise, who knows if and when we, like Harriet Tubman ourselves or any of the individuals they call of us, they would call have us been up too. there yeah. at Harlem stage to do that kind of thing. I was up there with Cassandra once for something, but you know Harriet Tubman, Henry Threadgill, and then the people associated with Henry's work through, through all of those years. And that comes through because a person like Jason with an idea and a head on his shoulder, this that generation that he's a part of, and a good ear, who um, is is a great player. It's been you know Henry enlisted him to play in one of his ensembles, doing this piece for Butch, curating uh, the uh, Kennedy Center Jazz Series, mm. a MacArthur Fellow now, MacArthur Grant Fellow since 2010. This is what can happen if somebody who's got a broad enough purview says, well, you, you need to, you know, and the, the people who like to listen to people who have these accolades and these positions, they say, well, you need to pay attention to this person and then set about to make that happen. And then they say, look, Jason, if you do that shit again, <laughs> just kidding. Oh, no, he's a place no, I'm just kidding. I'm just do kidding. It again. No, you know what I'm saying? It's it's a but yeah. that that's also a shift, Sadiq, that there's something happening, you know, because look, Vijay Iyer, MacArthur Fellow up at Harvard now. I forgot to mention that Jason's at NEC, New England Conservatory. Vijay was playing some of Henry's pieces in his trio. He started play, he was playing little pocket sized demons from very, very circus back in ninety two. He and so this generation of people who are part of this new uh, academic environment, right. but also touched into the stuff that's been going on, are bringing a, a, a different light to shine to the school on on what this field that we've been a part of, that we've all been a part of, for quite a long time. So that's that's a positive thing. Okay. And so far, it hasn't it hasn't clipped the wings of any of the work either. So, this, so that's pretty cool. Okay. 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 Uh, go go. No, just I I look. I got. Uh, uh, one, two, three more questions, and we're in 43 minutes. So, if we're going to make that hour mark, we got to All right. Kind of like compact okay. our responses. Um, <clears throat> the Tubman Wilson collaboration. Uh, Are Tubman collaborating with Chris Andrews? Yeah, what about Wilson? it? Well, yeah, <laughs> what about it? Exactly. You're asking my question. Go ahead, Mel. I mean, listen. listen. Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know uh, the history of everybody broke. here, including Cassandra. Uh, I just I mean, broke it. I'll be right back. I have to ah, pee. Brandon dashes. Okay. I have to pee. I'll be right back. He's going to pee. Well, you know, it's... Well, it came from, are looking at it came from about as kind of a bank shot, you know, Ooh, so... Uh, that's a good description. You know, bank we, shot. Yeah, we're, we're looking, you know, looking for projects to do, and Cassandra's name came up, and, you know... Uh, Brandon asked her, and she said yes. And so from there, we, you know, had to figure out what we were going to do. I mean, we kind of knew that we wanted to do 
original music and she plays guitar and we wanted to have a thing that was fun and more like a band and that's like a project. So it's a band and she's a member of the band. Okay. She plays guitar, she comes to rehearsal. She, you know, we write music together. It's like, a, you know, it's like a real band. And that's, that's interesting for her and it's interesting for us. Do you have a release already? No, we're going to do some recording. We, have, we s scheduled to do some recording in December, I believe. Or we're trying to get some done in December, and we're, we're going to have a recording, but there's nothing up yet. We're still writing. Okay. What's the project called? It's called Black Sun. Black Sun. Yeah. You know what that, that's about, right? Uh, I came up with the name, so yeah, I know. Ah. It's about. <laughs> Should I tell the story for the people who well, don't know? I mean, Make it's a different. Maybe you, your, your story of the black. There's many black sons, but I'll yes, tell you. Yes, let me what hear your version. It. It's a term from the Songhai language. Okay. And it refers uh, basically. Uh, the first riff is you know in in the middle of the. The Songhai people live near the Niger River, right? right? And when they go for water and they want the purest water from the bottom of the river or the middle of the river, the coldest, deepest part, that is called black water. Ah. Black water! And when they talk about the center of the sun, the hardest part of the sun, the most intense part of the sun, that is the black sun. Ah. So that's, that's where it comes from. It comes from their language and it comes from the idea of... Makes sense to me. Intensity, purity... And flipping the idea, you know, you know the whole thing, you know, it's kind of like, you know, not to get too Elijah Muhammad, but, you know, <laughs> who's the real colored man, you yeah, know what right. I mean? No, and, it, yeah, and even in China, it's, I, it was very interesting for me, you know, in China, they will never paint the walls white, because white equals death in, in their culture, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> it's kind of like these kind of, yeah, it's, it's a question of flipping this, of, you know, putting this in and creating a space. You know, people who know what that means, they can run with that or not. But it's, for us, it's, it kind of puts a space on what we want to accomplish. Well, I've recently read uh, in my uh, reach for uh, other truths that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that you can't really see the sun in free space, that it is black, yeah. that you can't actually see it. That's true. The sun itself, what emanates from or radiates from the sun can be seen through our atmosphere and things like that, the gases or the frequency uh, or whatever can be visualized with our limited capacity to see things. Uh, but the sun in free space cannot be seen. Right. Wow. Well, isn't it amazing how much of ad African cosmology is turning out to be scientifically correct? Well, I mean, it's remembering. <laughs> no, they're remembering. Yeah, it's not know, like they're advancing. The whole yeah. shit they call advancement is actually remembering. You know, yeah. uh, because all the shit was stolen in the first place. What do we mean by stolen? I don't want to go into that. Let me, let me, let me press because, you know, I love talking to you, Cass, because this I missed this in Berlin. I must tell you. And all yeah. you motherfuckers, I mean, all you people in Berlin, <laughs> get with me at words. the cafe and we can kick it like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, okay, so individual projects, philosophical aspects. Hold on one second. I'm going to pause this because now I too must go to the loop. Thank you. 